So um, PTC Therapeutics uh, launched uh, one of the first large-scale clinical trials for a novel therapeutic um, in Duchenne muscular dystrophy back in 2008. Uh, that trial was a 48-week trial with many um, kids of all different um, uh, ages and stages of, of Duchenne, but all having nonsense mutation. That clinical trial showed a, a clinically important difference in, in the outcomes and, and um, really from uh, the clinician investigator perspective really showed that that the primary endpoints end and all the secondary endpoints all favored treatment. However, because of variability in that trial, um, th we weren't able to see a statistically significant difference. So over the uh, next few years, PTC Therapeutics went went back and looked at their trial design. And you have to recall, this you know really was a time of uh, a relative infancy for Duchenne trials, and we we went into that with very few natural history studies on some of the outcome measures we were wanting to use. So so we learned more about the outcome measures, particularly um, the six-minute walk test, which has become a, a, a widely used uh, primary outcome in Duchenne trials and and then um, went back with a large again a large phase three trial with um, some of the inclusion criteria basically what we call enriched or, or more selective to try and um, reduce the variability that we saw in the first trial and also to um, uh, try and measure the six minute walk test um, in a way that, that that we could see changes over time um, compared to the first trial and that was called the ACT-DMD trial and that's um, uh, been recently completed in fact uh, at the end of uh, 2015 results were uh, the, the trial was finished and and again consistent with the first trial what was seen was I think clinically relevant um, benefits uh, to those who are on treatment um, and and what was very encouraging for uh, the community the DMD community both patients and and uh, the clinician investigators was that the results were were really all consistent uh, across primary and secondary outcomes all favoring treatment um, and so um, uh, despite that though the the trial was not statistically significant again on the primary outcome uh, so in the aftermath of that uh, trial um, uh, really what um, PTC has been focused on and us as clinician investigators trying to understand that um, you know that efficacy signal um, I should mention the the safety data on both trials has been very very good um, really no um, uh, significant serious adverse events there's lots of side effects that are mild in terms of GI uh, side effects but um, uh, but that's uh, um, not you know that that I think has not been um, any concerning factor for the community and really to put the you know what we're seeing in terms of these benefits emerging against the side effect profile has been very encouraging for all of us as well. Um, I, probably the most um, uh, important uh, um, aspects of, of the analysis that's been done to date, in my mind, is the combination of data from the original trial and the latest trial, the ACT-DMD trial. So the company has gone and done a meta-analysis of the results and and um, and that obviously um, is uh, you know an important um, uh, high evidence based uh, approach to combining trial results in small what is still relatively small patient populations uh, about 170 patients in the first trial and about 220 or 230 in the second trial and when you combine the results together in fact we do see then uh, statistically significant um, clinically relevant uh, efficacy measures on primary and secondary outcome measures emerging and I think that's really what's been uh, most encouraging for me as a clinician investigator and I think for the Duchenne um, community. Okay. 
Well, first off, I, I would um, step back a little bit and just say that I, I think um, that um, that I, I'm not sure with every situation we've had in DMD that we walk away from a large trial saying it, it works, this trial was just not done right or long enough um, or using the right outcome measure, we didn't know enough. I mean there definitely have been trials, clinical trials that are um, decidedly Ne negative um, and we've recently seen companies move product out of development be because you know really after thorough look um, the signal isn't th strong enough there the efficacy not strong enough for for ongoing development so but I think PTC is different um, uh, th that really you know to have two large trials consistently showing um, primary and secondary outcomes um, showing a, um, an improvement and then to be able to combine them together in a minute I, I think the confidence is is there around that um, there's no doubt that the that the regulatory journey uh, has been a challenge uh, for um, uh, for the Duchenne community um, and and it has been tested on a number of occasions of course PTC being being one of the companies that have you know that have um, gone and and gone to Health Canada gone to EMA gone to FDA and, and I think despite um, despite us hearing language from some of the regulatory agencies that, that, that they're um, looking to be more flexible, they're looking to evaluate rare disease drugs in a, in a different way, in a new paradigm. Um, I think making that transition really re really making that transition has been more more challenging for them than I think the language uh, that we you know that we hear from them when we when we get into um, some of the the pre NDA meetings or um, pre CTA me meetings in Health Canada um, so I, you know, I, I think all of us in the in the Duchenne community would like to see uh, uh, some different ways of of approaching a data set like like the PTC data set rather than, and I, I think the meta analysis is a great example. I mean, what more would, from a level of evidence perspective, what more would one want than combining two well done uh, studies together? And yet, uh, from um, what we gather right now, you know, really these two trials are being looked at very, very independently, and because you're right, neither of them reach that, you know, 0 0.05 p-value idea. Um, there, that's where it's been stalled. Uh, um, so I think we need we need more flexibility there. We need to see a different way of looking at the totality of the data.